Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with cool guys. All right. This episode on Jeeper with Cool Guy is a special episode because it's going to have absolutely nothing to do with the Jeep CJ7 restoration, other than this is what I used to help me with some of the parts. This is a double wall oven, and what I did is I took the thing apart, did some minor modifications to it, and now I have a full two-story double powder coating oven. Check that out. Want to see how I did it? Watch. Let me preface this with, I am just a guy in his basement restoring an old Jeep. Um, and all of the stuff that goes into this, I just kind of did trial by error and figured it out. So you can do this very easily. All you need to do is go out and find a wall oven for sale on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or whatever it was. I think we got this one for 75 bucks, 100 bucks maybe. You're going to need a few things. Um, you're going to need uh, some sheet metal, 20 gauge or 22 gauge, like the stuff you can get at uh, your hardware store. Uh, but if you want to go with a little bit thicker, 18 gauge is always a good option or even 16 gauge. And then obviously you're going to need some clamps and a couple of little minor things um, to build in to the structure of the double wall oven. But it's super cheap, and the cool thing about it is, is that once you get it done, you can have this forever. Let's start with the internal parts. So the first thing that you're going to want to do with this is you're going to want to take off your doors. Um, and to do that, on each one of the doors, there's a lower hinge point. So that door joint hinge, the way that you take this out is there's a little bracket up here that you need to switch it, flip out. And you flip that all the way out to where it is fully extended. And then you close the door back up and what will happen is, is this gets locked into here and then you can pull the door out because it kind of pushes the joint out from underneath this inner support piece. Before you do that, what you want to do is you want to measure uh, down to the sixteenth of an inch the distance between the top part of the lower door and the lower part of the bot, uh, top door so that when you adhere these things together and put in the supports you have the exact same drawbridge opening door that fits right where it's supposed to up here. When you get both of your doors taken off of the main oven, lie them on a 2x4. Kind of like this. And have two 2x4s two per door. The reason you want to do that is because you want to have the, the two doors completely level. And then measure out the distance between the, the bottom door and the top door and make sure that it is exactly um, the same distance on the left side and the right side so that when you put in the supports uh, you have the the proper distance for this thing to fully close and to create a good seal. Also make sure that the alignment of the door, the top and the bottom door, is uh, perfectly straight. So get out a T-square or something, make sure that you've got the measurement here right and everything's aligned. Now this is where the structural part comes in and this is probably the most important part as far as the structural integrity of this. So you want to make sure that the doors are perfectly level with each other and then get a piece of sheet metal. Um, you can do this any way you want. I've seen people create bands that go all the way up and down the door. Um, I've seen a couple guys just do a plate in the middle like this. The, the reason I didn't want to do the, the band that goes all the way up and, up and down the door is because it, this has these screws that hold the door together and I didn't want to disrupt that. And two, I didn't want this metal strip the, to uh, create a gap in the seal around the uh, oven door. 
So the way that I did this is I took a piece of 16 gauge steel and I cut it out to be exactly as wide as the doors, just wide or tall enough to fit right inside of the curvature of the upper and the lower door. Then I took a metal drill bit, I drilled holes, put six on the top, six on the bottom, and then I just used aluminum pop rivets and popped those through and then that became really strong. But this door becomes so heavy because of the glass and everything that there was still flex. So what I did is I took a, another piece of that 16 gauge steel and I just created these bands that would take up all the excess slack and this um, again drilled through those and then put them in with pop rivets. So just a couple pieces of sheet metal and some pop rivets um, and you've got, this thing is solid. Just to make sure that I've got a nice seal, I took a high temperature aluminum tape and just ran that along the edges of the metal so that there wasn't any leakage through here and also to kind of cover up any of the rough edges around the metal. Now let's get to the inner workings. Obviously your double oven isn't going to look like this when you first get it. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to cut out that whole middle section um, between the two ovens. That's going to consist of a few different things. Um, you're going to have a couple inner metal plates that are going to look something like this. And then in between that, you'll have your door locking mechanism. Um, this is for the self-cleaning ovens. Um, I'll get to this in a minute as to what we do with this. You'll also have to cut out a section of the bottom section of the upper oven and the top section of the lower oven. So before you start taking the, the oven apart and pulling pieces out, make sure that you measure where you want to cut the metal for the upper and the lower oven. What I did is I used the, the metal from the top oven and I measured it out, I think it was an extra six inches into the middle, and I marked that. And then you're gonna just wanna cut off the whole back. Most of these ovens have like a curvature um, in between the, the, the cavities. So I just cut along the seam of where that curvature was uh, with a uh, angle grinder and a metal cutoff wheel and then I just placed a metal plate over the top of that and then pop riveted this piece in there. I also layered it with a piece of aluminum foil on the outside of this plate, but inside of the insulation, just to be better sure. The other thing you wanna do before you start taking all the other stuff apart is to take off the, the thermal gasket. Um, the oven gasket, more or less the door gasket. And that is gonna consist of a metal plate at the top and at the bottom. And there's usually just one screw that holds this in. So what'll happen is, is when you, when you unscrew this plate, you'll find that this metal thermal gasket is just one piece that starts here, goes around, loops all the way up. So what I did is I took both of those thermal gaskets out uh, and then I used it as one continuous piece. You'll also notice that um, there's no broiling element for the lower oven and there's no baking element for the upper oven. I took both of those out uh, because my game plan was to have the broiling element for the top oven and the heating element, the baking element for the lower oven as my two heating pieces. You could get away with just having one, uh, like the lower baking uh, component, but I wanted to be able to heat the oven up quicker, and I also wanted to be able to run the convection oven fan to circulate the heat to make it a more even heat and to actually bake the stuff more consistently. All right, now that you got your game plan in place and you figured out what you want to do, and before you cut anything, uh, you're going to want to take the oven apart. So most of these double ovens, all they are are two single ovens stacked on top of each other. They're normally connected by some outer housing. So for this model in particular, you can take this whole thing apart, 
by removing these two outside flange uh, screws and then the ones that go across the back. Once you get those screws removed, um, and don't be afraid of taking out too many screws because really these things are very simple machines. There's also a few screws that are underneath the gasket that hold the, these two compartments into place. Once you get the outer housing unscrewed um, and you've taken off the backer plates to the oven and you've disconnected the lower oven's electrical components which would consist of the lights, the thermostat, and the baking and broiling element and the fan and the door locking mechanism. Those are all wires that should be readily available uh, in the back part of the oven. Then you can physically lift the top part of the oven off of the bottom part. Um, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. These are actually the exact same oven just stacked on top of each other. Then you can grab a uh, mat knife and cut out the, the insulation that's in the middle here because there would be a whole bunch of it. But you also want to keep that insulation or cut it in a way that you can fill in the area on this outer, these outer walls and this backer wall with that excess um, insulation. Pull out the, the lower oven component, this whole thing that you see right here. Um, and then cut out the top part of that um, with your overlap flap. Then you can lie the oven on its side, the upper part on its side, and then cut out the bottom part of the oven, keeping in mind your overlap flap. And then at that point, I would recommend bending it flat. Don't put the upper oven on the lower oven and then try and bend it out just because you're going to get a warp and you can't get the angle in here because you're bending 18 gauge steel by hand. It's not going to be very easy to do. Then you can put the lower oven back in, make sure you've got the insulation all packed into where it's supposed to be. Then you want to screw your housing back together. Then drill your holes into the, the flange that you've created and into the backer plate of the oven. And that way you can start putting in your pop rivets that's going to hold this all into place. Then you want to cut out a piece of whatever metal you, can, you have that's going to fit perfectly over the top of this back area. Then you pop rivet, drill that into these pieces. Um, make sure you've got enough insulation through the back here. I put a piece of aluminum foil behind this backer plate. You want to take your thermal tape and just tape off all of the seams. And then you have a pretty airtight configuration. One of the, the, the areas that is a little more difficult to accommodate for is the support bar that runs between the upper and the lower oven. So what I did is I just cut that out flush with the inner wall of the upper and the lower oven. There's a metal plate here that actually holds the upper door hinge in place. Um, make sure that you put this back in because this is actually a supporting element within the upper and the lower oven um, as far as this outer support band that runs the length of the, uh, the oven. And they're actually in, uh, intertwined. Next, reinstall your gasket line. It wasn't long enough to run all the way down and around and back up as one single piece. So my solution to that was to just run one piece down to here um, and then to splice it and just to drill a hole and then put a screw in and hold them together. I mean, this thing is not going to be airtight, but it's got a really nice seal to it to where there's not a lot of air leaking out of it. All right, so let's take off these back plates. All right. 
Now we've taken off both back panels. This is your wiring configuration. But this isn't what you're going to see when you open it up. Um, I've already removed a few of the wires and switched up a couple things. But I want to show you something that you need to take care of. Um, because this unit is a double digital unit. There is no manual dial on it. So uh, the manual dial has a different configuration. But since both of these ovens run off of a computer, you have to figure out how to actually hotwire the computer so that it thinks that both ovens are in sync. This is the locking mechanism for the lower oven. This is going to be on the front of the oven with the door this wiring harness is going to run through the cavity between the two ovens and it's going to come out here and then the rest of the wires are going to run up into the top of the oven to the computer and connect so as you can see I've already cut these things out these are the things that you're going to have to double you're going to have to splice into the computer board up top Believe me, it's not a big deal. I'll show you how to do that real quick. But what you can do is, at least on this oven, this lower locking mesm comes as a completely separate um, wiring harness, which is really kind of nice. Now I want to show you the, the wiring configuration because I want, I want to show you how I set mine up so that you can decide if you want to do it the same way or not. Since the broiling function and the baking function are two different sets on the computer. I just wanted to make it simple to where I could turn the upper oven on, hit bake, lower oven on, hit bake, and just set the temperature and leave it as is. Um, also, the broiling element of it takes a heck of a lot more energy. The broiling element in this oven runs at like 3,000 watts, where the baking oven, or the baking element, runs at 2,000 watts. What I, my plan to do was to take the baking wires off of the baking element and to swap them out for the broiling. The reason I'm showing you this now is because you really don't need to cut anything out of the back of this oven. Um, so do not be concerned about having to clip these wires or anything. But if you, since you are going to be taking out two of the elements, you are going to have open exposed wires. The orange wires, at least on this model, are the ones that were connected to the broiling elements. I taped off those wires so that there's no connection between those two and they have no risk of connecting and completing a circuit anywhere else. So tape off the broiling elements and then I just swapped the baking wires onto the broiling element. And that just makes it nice and simple. There's a few other wires back here. There's the white common wire there's your black wire. These all have splices on them because they're daisy chained between everything. And then you have your um, purple wire, which connects to the actual thermostat sensor. And then you have your main red power wire, which connects to the transformers on the upper and lower oven. That's really all that's back here outside of this wire harness mesh. Um, very simple configuration, um, not very complicated. The other thing I do want to point out is that your oven should have a wiring diagram. And that wiring diagram is normally in the top part of the oven inside of the metal casing behind the computer or the controls. So let's get to the top part and I want to show you what you need to actually do to hot wire this thing. Alright, so now we're going to take off the top part so we can get into the brains. Like I said before, every one of these wall ovens, they're pretty much, they're all different. But this one's fully digital oven. So hopefully this applies to what you have. So once you get that top cover off, then you're presented with this. Um, I've already cleaned this up. This thing was covered in so much dust it was disgusting. Um, but now you can start to see how the wiring and the brains all come together. Also, your wiring uh, diagram will more than likely be in some area up in this uh, oven. Mine happened to be over here. That's really handy. 
I would get that out first and then learn all of the wires and how everything's connected. It's just going to make your life that much easier. All right, let's start with the upper door lock mechanism. Um, there, this consists of three things. The door lock switch, the door lock motor, and the door switch. Pay attention to the configuration of this wire harness because this piece that I'm showing you right now is actually the lower oven's door locking mechanism and switch. This wire configuration coloring is the exact same for the upper oven locking mechanism. What we're going to do is we're going to hot wire or splice the exact same color wires coming out of this wire harness in the back of the computer and we're going to splice them into the respective switches and motor on the upper motor. So the out of all of this, this component is the most important. This is kind of the brains of the operation, meaning that the oven um, has to, the computer has to receive the signal from this switch that this piston is pressed in. When you close the door on your oven, it presses this little lever in. And then that lets the computer know that the door is closed. Why is that important? Well, at least as far as the, the motherboard, the computer in the oven is concerned, this is a safety control. And what will happen is, is if this piston isn't uh, closed, and it's not receiving a signal from this switch, the heating element will not power on. If you've ever opened up an oven, you'll hear a clicking sound. Um, and that is, that is this switch turning off the heating element. In a moment, when we uh, get really close into the actual upper uh, motor, locking motor, you'll see that the wire configuration is very much the same. It'll also help to look through that diagram that I just mentioned to see which one of these wires actually connects. But just to give you a little bit of foresight, the upper motor will have a blue line and a brown line that run to the, the door lock switch. It'll have a white wire and a yellow wire with a tracer that runs to the upper motor and then it'll also have an orange with tracer or maybe it's just orange I'm not really quite sure um, and a uh, another brown wire that runs to the actual door switch at least in my model the brown wire that connects to the door locking switch and the door switch itself Although they are slightly different brown colors here, are the exact same brown color on the upper motor. On my oven, the door switch signal wire is brown. It's actually this switch right here. The dark brown one with the white tracer, this one here, actually was wired to the lower oven door switch. So what I did is I cut it off about six inches out from the computer box and then I just spliced that in with the upper oven door latch switch right at this um, clamp. The door locking mechanism or switch is this blue wire, the blue with the white tracer was the one that ran down to the the lower oven door switch motor and I cut that off six inches out from the the computer box and spliced that in to this one so I've got both blue wires running in here I've got both of the brown wires running into here this yellow with white tracer which also ran down to the lower oven motor I spliced into the back of the the yellow line that runs into the top oven's motor. I would recommend not doing anything other than that. 
what you're really doing is you're faking out the computer to think that whenever the top door is closed, both doors are closed because there is no longer a switch for the lower oven. All right, that was a lot, especially explaining how to do the inner flanges and getting all that stuff connected. Uh, I may not have done the best job of explaining how I did it, but I think by seeing it, um, hopefully that will explain visually how to do it. Final touch. Even if you get the door really perfectly straight, there's going to, it's, it's such a heavy door, almost impossible to get it perfectly um, symmetrical. But what you're going to need to do is you'll obviously have to have some way of being able to close the door to where you turn the switch off. And that goes back to that door switch we were looking at a little while ago. To achieve that, went out to the hardware store and got two fairly decent um, strength clamps. I screwed in an L bracket on both sides of the door and then using this outer um, support piece, I just clamp it shut. And that creates a nice, tight seal. And turns the light off, sets the switch, and we're good to go. Now, I have complete control over this. I just never want to use the, the broil function um, because the broil isn't hooked up to anything. So the way that I do this, um, I wanted to keep control over the upper and the lower oven and still have the convection. So I could just upper oven, set the temperature, and then lower oven, set the temperature, and then if I want, I can turn the convection oven on, on the top and then hit start. And then if I wanted to, I could turn the upper oven off or I could turn the lower oven off. So it gives me a lot more flexibility instead of just running one unit. And there you have it. That's how you take a double wall oven and convert it into a single powder coating machine. Like and subscribe. Let's keep the CJ7 world going because I need all the help I can get.